those of you who don't know me, I'm a senior, or else I wouldn't be doing this. That's kind of an important factor. Um, my job, I guess, is to share with you a little part of my testimony and my favorite verse. Um, so at the top of the overly large cards compared to the rest of them, pieces of paper, uh, is Exodus 14.14, 14, which reads, I don't know if it's the same version, but it should read, uh, the Lord will fight for you, you must only be still. Um, and some of you might be thinking, well, that's kind of weird. Uh, does that mean God's going to come down and uh, beat up people when they annoy me or make my sister stop arguing with me or something? <laughs> I so wish. No, um, not quite. So instead of asking that question, let's turn to scripture and see why this peculiar thing is said. So Exodus 14 takes place after the Egyptians uh, release the Israelites from captivity. Um, and they're at the Red Sea and kind of like, okay, well, we're, we're stuck now. What do we do? And then they see the Egyptians have decided to come back and kill them all, which of course is going to scare them a little bit. So they cry out to God and Moses is like, guys, chill out. Like the Lord's going to fight for you. You only need to trust him. Um, and then two verses later, sure enough, Moses raises his staff and God gives him the power to split the sea. And the Red Sea parts, and the Israelites make it safe across. So this verse isn't exactly saying God's going to come down in a like shining armor and a chariot of lightning and get out boxing gloves and beat up whoever's annoying you. It's more of he's going to give you the power and the, the wisdom to face any challenge and adversity that might uh, that you might encounter. So. How this applies to my life personally is more of an interesting story. So my whole life, I mean, I'm sure you guys know from just sitting here listening to me, I'm not exactly the most quiet person. I'm energetic and quite frankly annoying in some situations. Um, when I was younger, that was a lot worse. It was a lot, it was, it was bad. Uh, didn't really have too many friends growing up, or at least too many friends that I really knew what the word friend was because I was like, oh, they're talking to me. I'm just gonna talk their ears off, yay. Um, and in middle school, that kind of caught up with me, uh, especially in seventh grade. It was not a very good year for me. And there was a lot of battles and problems that I encountered that I didn't know how to deal with. And I was young, I was scared. I thought I had to fight everything on my own. And my parents would always tell me, hey, like, like we're on your team, we're on your side. We got your back and all that. And I was like, okay, well that's well and good, but what does that help me with? And then I found this verse when I was at Frontier Camp one year, which is like best Christian camp ever. Just saying, you guys should check it out, it's awesome. Um, and I was shown this verse and it just kind of hit me. It's like, I don't have to fight my own battles. I got this omnipotent, omnipresent, super awesome, powerful God who's giving me the strength and walking with me and fighting my battles with me and for me. And I don't have to fight it alone. I don't have to do this alone. All I gotta do is put my faith my trust in God and he's going to get me through whatever I got to go through and it's not just me and it's not just the Israelites that he promises that to it's everybody every single person gets that promise it's pretty straightforward that the Lord God will fight for you not he might fight for you if you do your homework uh, he might fight for you if you uh, clean your room although I'm sure parents will agree that's a very good thing if we do that they do those things but it's unconditional if we put our trust in our faith in God he will give us the strength and the courage necessary to fight our battles and to conquer everything that we could possibly go through. So I don't know exactly how much time we have left because Dunbar wasn't very clear on his accuracy on timing. <laughs> so I have this prayer at the bottom of this. It's kind of long, so I don't think I have enough time to completely read through it. But my mom showed this to me not too long ago and I've been reading through it and it's really quite powerful. Um, and it works very close to the message and with my life as well. When you get in a fight, your hands are closed in a fist and you're about to hit someone. The problem with that is that when your hands are closed and you're mad and you're wanting to fight, you can't receive anything because your hands are clenched and you can't exactly catch things or receive things with closed hands. So this prayer is a reminder to us and um, and admittance to God that we have our hands closed. Oh, okay, cool. Anyway, read through the prayer. It's awesome. Rotation time. Thank you. Thank you so much.